In this video I will show you how to wire a three-zone central heating system that has a mixture of radiators and underfloor heating. And I will not be using any dedicated underfloor heating wiring centers. It's a bit unusual and it puzzles people when they say it, that there is no actuators, especially electricians, they can't get their heads around what's going on there, but electricians can't get their heads around about a lot of things. It makes the installation easier, it makes it cheaper because I don't have to purchase additional equipment and it also makes it more reliable because there are no PCB based wiring centers to fail and there are no actuators to fail either. Originally this video wasn't even supposed to go on YouTube. I shot it specifically for Peter who uh, works with me from time to time and he really wanted to learn how to wire those systems in that manner. Unfortunately he couldn't make it to site that day so I shot that video specifically for Peter and then I thought well since I've done all that work, I might as well share it on YouTube. So, here it comes. Enjoy! So I've got system pressure tested on both manifolds and now it's time to wire this setup. I am using one manifold per one area. I will not use actuators because there's no need for them. And I will just use a zone valve to control the manifold. And the other manifold has its own zone valve right here as well. So the zone valve opens and it turns the pump on as well. So you've got controls, wiring center, zone valves and pumps. The way it works is as follows. If you learn how to wire those things, the most important thing is understanding what wires do and understanding how zone valves operate. On a two-port zone valve you'll have usually five wires. Obviously we've got earth, and earth is easy, it always goes to earth. Neutral always goes to neutral, so we can ignore those two. And then on heating controls, on 230 volts controls, you will have permanent lives and switched lives. Permanent lives are wires that will always be energized and switched lives are wires that are either energized or not energized depending on the state of controls. What we have here is on a zone valve, we know we can ignore neutrals and uh, earths because they go always go together and we are left with three wires, brown, orange and grey. Brown is your switched life, not permanent life, so don't get, don't get confused, it's a switched life. So, when the brown is energized, the zone valve will open. So we are left with two wires, orange and grey. Now, it's customary that grey will have a permanent life, so it's always a current going to, to the grey wire. And orange is a cable that will send switched life to fire the boiler. You could do it other way around because really what happens here is if you energize the brown on the zone valve, the zone valve will do two things. It will open and it will also close a micro switch between those two wires. This is a resting position of the valve, no power on the brown. As soon as brown gets energized, those two wires get linked together inside the valve. So whatever is connected to one of those wires, gray or orange, is linked together now. So if you've got permanent life on gray, the orange gets energized as well and it switches the boiler on. However, if you've got volt-free switching, you could run those back to the boiler as well and those will turn the boiler on without vol with volt-free switching or with uh, DC current. It really doesn't matter. It's just a switch. It's just a micro switch on a valve. Brown is a switched life from our controls to open the valve. Grey is permanent life connected to browns on the wiring center from a socket or a switched spare. And orange, all the oranges will go together from all the zone valves and they will go back to the boiler to switch the boiler on. We also have to switch the pumps on and the pumps will be connected to the browns of the zone valves. So the controllers, they will turn the zone valve on and the pump on. You don't use orange to turn the pumps on because if you use orange to turn this pump on it would also turn the other pump on on the other manifold even though it might not be on. So in a way zone valve gets switched life on a brown, the pump gets switched life on a brown as well. Cars. Ah! Cars. And here you can see I've made links for my permanent lives so I can use one terminal per permanent life so I don't have to cram too many wires into one terminal. So I've got most of my wiring run to the wiring center. Uh, I've got my pumps, I've got my zone valves, I've got my power supply. 
and now I have to wire three wireless controls, one per zone. This one will be for central heating, radiators, this is for underfloor heating here, and that one's for underfloor heating in the studio number two. Now, when you wire uh, controls, you have to understand the concept of normally open, normally closed, and common. The way to understand it is, common is in the middle, it's like a thing that moves to normally close and normally open, making contacts with either normally close or normally open. And wherever it makes contact, that's where the current will go. And the way to remember how they operate is, they could be just called on and off. So normally open, if you read it backwards, is on. So normally open is on or call for heat, normally closed is off. There's many ways to wire it, but in our case we're going to wire permanent life to common. When there's no call for heat, it's connected to off or normally closed. We're not using that connection. When there's call for heat, the controller will move from common to normally open or on and supply power there. The back plates on the controllers, they need neutral in life and then a link life with one, which is common in my case. And then number two is normally open. Read it backwards, on. So that's my call for heat. And from number two, I'm gonna take a wire back to the wiring center and connect it to the brown of a corresponding zone valve. If I want to heat this area, studio number one, that's the zone valve furthest to the right and the controller furthest to the right. And the switched light from number two, normally open, will go to the wiring center and will energize zone valve number three, brown wire. The zone valve will open and send the switched light signal on an orange back to the boiler. So we have to understand the concept of common, which is usually permanent light, normally open, which is usually on, and normally closed, which is off, and it's energized when there's no call for heat. So to wire those controls, we need neutral, life, earth, and call for heat. So we need three cores plus earth. So we've got blue to neutral, brown to permanent life, linked with number one, which is common, and a gray of number two, which is called for heat, normally open. So that's all my earths and neutrals connected and a supply, permanent life. And now I have to connect all my permanent lives. There'll be one for each controller, so that's three, and one for each zone valve. Browns to controller, gray to zone valves. So six permanent lives, that's all I need here and seventh the supply to the wiring center coming from the boiler. And that's all my permanent lights connected. So three grays from zone valves and three browns from my wireless receivers. Now we have to pay a little bit more attention when we start playing with switched lives. So we've got all permanent lives done, we've got all earth done and we've got all neutrals done. Right now we have to start wiring how those switched lives are gonna switch things on and off. So the first wire I'm gonna do is the wire coming from controller one for central heating, connected to terminal two, normally open. That's this gray wire here, I marked it one. And that will go to the brown of the central heating zone valve. So zone valve, the first from the left, zone, zone valve number one. So I have to find this wire and then find the wire from zone valve number one, brown. Oh, I got it here and I have to connect those two wires together. What I also do, I'm gonna put a brown sleeve on the gray wire to mark it as switched live. So when you open the wiring center, you know which ones are switched live. So that's all the wiring in the wiring center completed. We've got earths on the right, all earths together, neutrals on this block here, one, two, three, four, supply live, permanent life on the top of that block. Then we've got our three permanent lives. This one goes to two zone valves, this one goes to two, one zone valve, one controller, and this one goes to two controllers. Six permanent lives on connections one, two, three, and obviously we've got jumpers on top because the supply comes from here to those permanent lives. On connector four, we've got a gray wire coming from controller number one, switched live from controller number one to brown of central heating zone valve. Terminal number five, we've got switched life coming from controller number two to brown of the zone valve and brown of the pump on the manifold in studio two. On terminal six, we've got gray coming from controller number three, switched life, going to the zone valve number three 
and a pump in Studio One. Those three oranges are oranges coming from all the zone valves. They switch switched live through that jumper here on Terminal 8 back to the boiler to fire the boiler. Basically what happens is those permanent lives on Terminal 1 and 2 on grey, grey wires from, from the zone valves, they are switched to orange wires when the zone valves open. So if one valve opens, there's uh, life here. If two open or three zone valve opens, there's always switched life on terminal uh, seven, jumper, terminal eight, back to the boiler to fire the boiler. And that's again my zone valves. Central heating, underfloor heating studio two, underfloor heating studio one, which is here. Central heating, control number one, underfloor heating in studio next door, studio two, control number two, and control number three, studio one. So this is this area, this pump, this manifold. You can see I'm not using actuators and I'm not using a dedicated underfloor heating wiring center, but you can only do that if your manifold is serving just one zone, as in this case. So I've got one manifold per zone. And obviously I have to wire my uh, permanent life, neutral and earth and switched life to the boiler to fire the boiler. So the boiler supplies power to the wiring center and the wiring center goes back on another fourth wire to fire the boiler. And that will depend, you know, that varies on the type of the boiler you're using, how, how that's wired. I hope this is clear. If you have any questions, just comment below. I'll try to answer them. And again, you only use this setup if one manifold serves one zone.